Welcome, welcome, welcome to the first of a four-part series focused on Samurai Wallet, a free and open source non-custodial Bitcoin wallet. My name is Brother Rabbit, hosting alongside Bitcoin Q&A. The aim of these sessions are to take you back to basics with a new user-focused overview of the Samurai ecosystem. In particular for today, we're going to be discussing the Samurai Wallet and Sentinel mobile app. For the following three sessions, we'll be covering Bitcoin privacy preserving spend tools, Wellpool, the CoinJoin implementation, and Dojo, a full Bitcoin node implementation, which serves as the backend server for your Samurai Wallet. So now my script is over, let's jump into it, shall we? Let's do it, I'm excited, I'm excited. How are you doing, brother, are you okay? Yeah, very well, thank you. It seems like we've got a, a good amount of people join us in the live chat. I was uh, just trying to see how many, what sort of numbers we've got in. Can you see anywhere? Uh, not on my current screen, I can't know. But welcome all, thank you for joining us. Awesome, so um, shall we just kick off with a bit of housekeeping? Um, I think the, the, the plan is that uh, brother and I were just going to run through the uh, the slide deck that we've got, have a quick chat about all of the basics of the, of the wallet and the, the tools within it. Um, so if you've got any questions, if you want to drop those into the chat, um, we'll take them at the end. Um, is there anything else to add there, brother, before we kick off? Or No, I think that's uh, that's good. We'd appreciate, obviously, if you can uh, retweet the live stream, that'll be uh, get a few more people in here as, the, as they trickle in. Awesome. So just, just one final thing before we kick off. Um, this this one, sorry, uh, I'll make our apologies to the OGs uh, in the room. Uh, this is going to be a bit basic for you guys, um, but that's kind of the point is that um, we've had some awesome streams from uh, the Bitcoin Enemies team where they've sort of covered all of the Samurai Wallet uh, features, um, and um, they are really good at sort of getting into the, the, the nitty gritty and the technicals and stuff, which can be quite overwhelming for some new users sometimes. Uh, so the, the aim of these four sessions is to really sort of take it back to basics um, to help uh, everybody that's coming into the space and coming into, you know, hopefully starting to take their privacy a bit more seriously and they want to get to grips with Samurai Wallet. This will be a, an awesome resource for, for those guys. Um, right, so let's kick it off, shall we? Um, if I can click onto the right screen, it would help. There we go. So. So what is Samurai Wallet? So Samurai Wallet is uh, one of the OGs uh, in the wallet world. Uh, it was started in 2015. Um, it's completely free uh, and open source. Uh, there's no purchase necessary. Um, and all of the uh, source code for the wallet is completely out in the open uh, so that any of the technical wizards uh, out in the space can uh, can scrutinize all of the code and, and make sure that everything that's going on in the wallet is, is honest and, and is, uh, you know, there's nothing um, untoward going there uh, we've just got brother rabbit dropped off i think he's just dropped me a message typical are you there brother wonderful he's not okay i'll carry on while he joins in again hopefully um so the wallet is a uh, android only um so sorry to the ios users there is um uh, there's there's no hope for you really you're gonna have to uh, get your hands on a, a cheap android phone to, to get access to the wallet unfortunately um the, the wallet comes with a massively extensive feature list, which we're going to be giving an overview uh, of all of the main ones over the next uh, next four sessions. Um, and we have a massive, uh, the wallet has a massive focus on privacy uh, again. Uh, and the, the feature set that's built within the wallet is is um, is testament to that really, which we'll obviously be getting into as well. Um, and finally, the, there's no personal identification required for the wallet you can um you know there's no accounts no email no phone number nothing like that so you can be sure that uh, the wallet is um is as private as the as the guys say it is really um brother are you back i think you're back in the room are you yeah i'm back in the room for now um apologies all uh, i've just had to restart my computer so uh q if you just want to take the lead and i'll be with you in two moments awesome okay so we uh, let's move on to the next slide so where can you download Samurai Wallet? So there's three main ways that you can get your hands on it. Uh, there's obviously the Play Store, uh, where you will be familiar from downloading your apps, um, the Google Play Store. Uh, you can get a direct APK file from SamuraiWallet.com, uh, which is essentially, it's, just, it's exactly the same file, uh, but you can download it directly from, from the, the team's website. Uh, or you can use Fdroid, which is a free and open source uh, app store um, that comes packaged with any of the alternative Android operating systems like Calyx or uh, Graphene OS. Uh, so those are the three main ways you can do it. 
Um, so a brief overview on the features. Um, so Samurai Wallet is completely non-custodial. Uh, so what that means for the, the layman is that you are always in control of all of the Bitcoin held within that wallet. Uh, as long as you've got your, your backup safe, which again we'll be touching on a bit later on, um, you can be sure that you're the only one who's in charge of all of the sats within your wallet. Um, it defaults to Tor connectivity, uh, so that enables um, some network level privacy so that you don't have to share your IP address with the Samurai servers if you choose to um, if you choose to use their, their server as a backend, uh, which most new users will do when they uh, initially download the wallet. Um, we, but conversely, uh, you can also connect to your own, uh, your own node uh, in the Samurai uh, world, that's called Dojo. Uh, so the, the, the absolute most private way to operate your Samurai wallet um, is to do so by connecting to your own Dojo, which again, we'll be covering uh, in greater detail in week four. Um, but don't don't let that sort of um, overwhelm you if you're new to the space you absolutely don't it's not a requirement for to use the app um, to uh, to have your own uh, node set up uh, it's something that you would probably look to uh, strive towards and, and to sort of uh, work towards to be the most private as, as you can be uh, brother do you want to take over Are you up to speed now You're muted if you're talking. Uh, nothing like a good few technical difficulties. <laughs> Here he is. Where did you leave off? Uh, we are up to coin control, if you want to cover that one off. Uh, coin control, yeah. So um, at a top level, um, Samurai Wallet by default allows you to you know, manage your UTXOs, that's the pieces of Bitcoin within your wallet, really easily. This you know, just makes for a very good privacy-preserving wallet. Um, and it you know stops you tripping tripping yourself up in the future when you go to spend your Bitcoin. Um, account segregation is the next one. So again, at a very top level, um, by default, Samurai separates out the different areas in the app for you. So you don't have to worry about merging your Bitcoin that has been mixed through Whirlpool with the Bitcoin um, in your deposit account. So again, it just uh, it just sort of keeps it really simple for you so you don't trip yourself up uh, and then onto the privacy preserving spend tools we're going to cover these uh, in the next session uh, but as a, a quick top level there's um, there's four different types of spend tools uh, and then on to uh, Soroban do you want to take that cue yeah so uh, Soroban to, to try and keep it simple um, is the sort of communication layer that is built into the wallet uh, that facilitates some of those spending tools that we're, we're going to cover off in the next session really um, it, it's a sort of Tor-based communication layer, effectively. Uh, you won't sort of interact directly with with Soroban, so to speak. It just kind of uh, works in the background for you. Um, moving on to encrypted backups. Um, so by default, when you when you set up a Samurai wallet, which we're we're going to walk you through that in a second, um, the the wallet will create an encrypted backup file, which it saves uh, into the um, into the uh, file system on your phone. Um, it's encrypted by the passphrase, which you'll again you'll set up when you uh, create the wallet. Um, so it's kind of like a, a nice um, addition to have, really. That you know you've you've got to kind of get out of jail free card if you were to, God forbid, lose your seed words. Um, CoinJoin uh, again, uh, the Samurai guys are famous for uh, their Whirlpool uh, CoinJoin implementation. We have a deep dive on that in session number three, I think, is it? With the rabbit yeah that's correct awesome. um, so we'll give you a good good run through of uh, how to you know get your first coins uh, into whirlpool and what to do from there um, and then we're on to pay nims which we will cover uh, again during these sessions uh, and that's uh, um, samurai wallet's implementation of bit 47 now you don't need to worry about that but you can claim your own pay when you set up your new wallet and we'll talk you through that in a few moments and then we've got batch spends. Um, so at a high level, batch spends um, is, well, Samurai Wallet is one of few wallet implementations which allows you to batch spend. So this allows you to send to multiple mar par participants in one transaction. So say you could send uh, to five people at the same time in one transaction. Okay. Uh, on to- Go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. You, can, you can take the next one. <laughs> yeah, so uh, the last couple of uh, points there, we've got dust attack warnings. Uh, so that might sound uh, qu 
quite a, a sort of a serious thing to worry about as a new user. Um, but don't worry, the, the wallet's got you covered here. Uh, dust attacks are um, essentially where um, somebody who's trying to surveil the, the chain might um, send out really small pieces of Bitcoin to recently used addresses to try and um, see if they're used in future spends together and it helps them try and sort of uh, cluster, peop cluster people together or cluster addresses together if you like to try and de-anonymize people. Uh, the wallet's got a built-in functionality where it's able to detect that. It'll uh, pop up a little warning for you um, and it will um, say, you know, do you want me to uh, mark this as do not spend so that you, it sort of mitigates the attack essentially. Um, and finally, offline mode. So, Samurai Wallet works um, with without a network connection. It'll allow you to um, create transactions um, and then broadcast them through the uh, the partner app that sent called Sentinel, which we'll be covering off today as well. Um, so it works in kind of um, you, you don't necessarily need a, a network connection, so you can use the the wallet in an offline mode if you want to. Perfect. So that was a little bit of an overload of information for you. So now we're going to take you through uh, how you go about setting up your Samurai wallet. So after you've downloaded it, either through the Play Store, which I don't recommend, uh, through F-Droid, which I do recommend, or through the direct APK file from Samurai Wallet, um, you're greeted by the, the welcome screen. And the first thing you're going to see is it's going to ask you where you'd like to um, choose for your encrypted backup to be saved. So this is important. Choose a good location on your on your phone. Um, so this will uh, be the place that your encrypted backup is automatically saved to each time you exit the app. And then in the next screen you're going to be greeted with, uh, we always recommend for you to enable Tor. Um, so as uh, Samurai is default over Tor, this is best for your privacy and hides your IP address. So you just touched on something there just quickly. Uh about that you don't recommend the the play store um that might kind of worry people mm. do you want to just sort of cover off quickly why why that might be yeah certainly i think i think you know we're, we're going so far to sort of preserve our privacy you know we we often recommend using de-googled phones um and you know so it's it's all about sort of doing what we can we've come this far to downloading a, a, at least getting to download a, a privacy preserving wallet um by downloading it through the play store i guess you're sort of you're letting you're letting google know oh by the way i've got a i've got a bitcoin wallet on my phone so um you know if you want to do that it's up to you but i think for for best practice um you can either download it for through f droid and sometimes the beauty of f droid is is you can um it'll automatically update your samurai wallet when a new update comes out um so if that's something you'd like to go for that's a, a good um a good thing you can do or you can download the .apk file um from samurai wallet's website and so those are the two best privacy methods of, of downloading of downloading an app perfect thank you for that right um, so the the next step when you're setting up the wallet again probably a bit more for advanced users again we touched on the most private way to use the wallet would be to do so through your own uh, having having it connected through your own dojo and um, so if you don't have your own dojo at this point you can just leave that toggle switched off um, and move on to the next step where you would um, set a passphrase so your passphrase is, um, it's incredibly important that when you create this, you make sure it's a secure one. So don't use password123 or QWERTY456. Um, make sure that you, you use one that is, is robust and secure um, and that you also write it down um, and make sure that it's stored in a method that's um, going to uh, withstand the test of time and hopefully a, a bit of... Uh, taking a bit of a battering maybe by water or fire or anything like that because essentially if you were to create this wallet up load it up with uh, with some sats uh, and then lose your passphrase um, if you were to then not have access to the phone um, if you don't have your passphrase you cannot recover any of your bitcoin so that would obviously not be a uh, favorable uh, position to be in um, and lastly you're going to be asked to set a pin code uh, this is purely to prevent uh, easy access to the wallet. So if somebody was to uh, snatch your phone off you, um, they'd still need to know the pin code for the app uh, to get into the wallet to be able to spend any any funds from there. And this is this is something that trips uh, a lot of people up, uh, isn't it? Q that with the pin code, they uh, they sometimes 
um, think that that's their passphrase. So when we say passphrase, we mean the long string of numbers and letters that you've entered in yourself and you need this passphrase to be able to access your Bitcoin. Yeah, very good point worth noting. Um, I, I uh, so the key is that we you just make sure that you write everything down uh, and back it up robustly, which obviously you're going to cover off now. Yeah. So the next screen you're presented with is your 12 seed words. And you're also um, queued, um, if you if you so, w so wish to do so, download a PDF, which you can print off to write down your 12 words. So again, you need these 12 words plus your passphrase to access your Bitcoin. So it's always good to write these down, at least temporarily write them down on a piece of paper and keep them somewhere safe. Now, personally, for me, I like to keep my uh, my 12 words separate to my passphrase that's a little bit of extra security because if somebody finds my 12 words they can't access all my bitcoin they'll need my passphrase as well yeah very good point very good point indeed uh so moving on um you will have a final review of your passphrase which is the the left hand phone that you can see there um so make sure that you've written it down uh correctly um if you use the you know a long string of letters and numbers uh, it's quite easy to have made a typo there. So this will be the last time that the wallet actually shows it to you before you go into the full, uh, into the main wallet itself. Um, once you've done that, you move on, you can claim your paying in bot. Uh, so your, your paying in bot is uh, essentially like a, a, a personalized identifier uh, that is generated from, it's unique, completely unique to your wallet. Um, and I think we'll we'll leave it at that for now because we're gonna cover the, the deeper dive on pay names a little bit later on as to what they what they are what they can do and why they are such a cool thing to have uh, and that's it job done so you've got yourself uh, you're completely set up with samurai wallet literally in a couple of taps uh, the, the the key thing to remember like we say i keep i keep banging on about it is just make sure that you write down those seed words and that passphrase uh, in a in a robust way perfect so you're greeted with the first screen, which is the gray wallet, or what's referred to as the gray wallet, otherwise known as the deposit account. So this is the main screen that you're gonna be sending Bitcoin to. So you'd send Bitcoin to yourself, or you, know, you receive Bitcoin from somebody else by tapping on the floating icons at the bottom and hitting receive. So this is your gray wallet, your deposit account. Now within Samurai Wallet, you've got lots of different accounts. Now they're all managed for you. You don't necessarily need to sort of remember how they all work or whatnot. They're all segregated out for you. So if you tap the top left corner icon, this takes you to your Whirlpool account. So you, the sort of top level um, breakdown of this is that you know, you've got your deposit account, your premix account, postmix, your ricochet, and something called bad bank, which uh, is, is currently not in use. But Samurai manages this all for you in the background. And this is uh, really good for your privacy because it means that you don't trip yourself up when uh, when using Whirlpool, for example. Yeah, I think the key thing to remember there is is that white box there that as long as you've got that those seed words and that passphrase uh, completely backed up, then that's enough to recover all of those different accounts that brother's just been talking about. Right, shall we? Yeah, so you know if if Samurai Wallet was to do a runner, all you need is your twelve words, your passphrase, and your account numbers. Exactly. Yeah. And, and they're, they're common knowledge, aren't they? Those account numbers and derivation paths, which again, is probably getting a little bit too technical. It's probably just uh, worth remembering that they are public knowledge and, you know, it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't, yeah. you, know, you wouldn't have to go digging for them or anything like that. Yeah, certainly. Okay. So just to, this is going to be a brief rundown of all of the sort of features of the, when you first open the wallet, what do all the buttons and things do? So brother just touched on there. I'll start in the top left and I'll work my way around clockwise. Um, brother just touched on there the the little samurai icon in the top left. That's how you access your Postmix wallet. Um, quick overview: your Postmix wallet is where your Bitcoin sort of uh, ends up after you've done any whirlpool mixes. Uh, moving around clockwise, so you've got the the menu button there, the three dots. Uh, that's where you're gonna you'll be able to go into the advanced options or the settings of the wallet to to check any any of the f sort of finer detail. Um, obviously, you've got your main account balance uh, shown in the center of the screen at the top there. Um, and if you were to press and hold that, uh, that would open up the unspent transaction output list, which Brother Rabbit's going to take you through in a second. 
Uh, moving down to the bottom right hand corner of the screen, you've got what's called the floating action button. Um, so if you were to tap that, um, the, the blue button, uh, it pops up the four buttons that, that are, are above it. Um, the top one is obviously uh, the way that you would open the Whirlpool client. So if you wanted to initiate a Whirlpool mix from your phone, you can do that using that button. Uh, the next one down opens the painting screen where you can see all of your painting contacts uh, and you can also initiate spend to any one of those um, contacts from there. And then the bottom two are the sort of simple ones where the red one you can go and spend Bitcoin and the bottom one is where you would go to generate receiving addresses if you wanted to receive any Bitcoin. Um, and then in sort of the center of the of the phone there, you've got the transaction list. Um, any incoming transactions are denoted in green and you can see the little arrow pointing sort of uh, in towards the phone if you like. And then any white transactions are outgoing transactions. And again, you can um, set the wallet to show these in Satoshis or in uh, Bitcoin, depending on your preference. So if you, uh, if you were to long press on your Bitcoin balance at the top of the gray screen, it, it brings you uh, and shows you all your UTXOs or your unspent transaction outputs. Now, there's lots of other wallets out there which abstract all this information away from you. From you. And when they do that, um, it doesn't allow you to spend privately because you're not in control of what UTXOs you are spending. So say I mowed Bitcoin Q&A's lawn uh, once a week for a month and he was extremely generous and gave me one Bitcoin every week. At the end of the month, I would have four Bitcoins. So this is in my UTXO list. Um, there would be four UTXOs, each of a value of one Bitcoin. And what I can also do in my UTXO list is I can label each of my UTXOs with the origin from where they're from. So this helps you in the future when you go to spend because you know exactly which UTXO came from which place. So I would, in my case, label all my four UTXOs with from Bitcoin Q&A. And then say if I was to then receive um, some pocket money uh, from my grandparents, I might label uh, those UTXOs with my grandparents' name. Um, so then in the future, I can, when I go to spend in a privacy preserving fashion, I know which UTXOs are from which entity and can, can construct con tra transactions uh, in a privacy preserving fashion. Um, so on the screen here, you can see that there's a, a few different boxes. Uh, so at the, on the far left, you've got uh, the do not spend section. So you can mark UTXOs as do not spend, um, which means that when you go to create a transaction, the wallet will by default not pick that UTXO. It will it will leave it in there and it won't be touched. And then on the on the uh, screen in the middle, you've got the uh, we've opened up one of the UTXOs. At the top, it displays the TXID, the amount of that UTXO, the address which that uh, was received into, the spend status, so whether that's marked as uh, do not spend or spendable, and any notes or labels you have uh, manually inputted. Uh, and you can manage each UTXO using the UTXO action button in the top right corner. And that brings up the UTXO action list. So that all sounds super, super, super technical. So, so are, are you saying that I need to go and kind of pick which piece of Bitcoin that I want to spend every time I want to spend? Or will the wallet do that for me if, I, if I'm not bothered? Ah, so the, the wallet can do that for you. Um, and, you know, if you were to use one of the privacy preserving spend tools, which we're going to cover in the next session, um, that's even better. Um, but uh, the wallet does give you the ability, if you wanted to, to take one mm. UTXO, select that UTXO and just spend that Bitcoin, just spend that single UTXO. But by and large, the wallet will con construct the transactions for you without you needing to give a care in the world. Okay, that's good. And and so why would somebody want to spend just one single UTXO? Can you give us an example as to why that might be a good thing? Um, so perhaps you might be uh, wanting to uh, you you know make a donation. So you don't want to leave. Um, you don't want to have any change come back to yourself. So when you spend Bitcoin, what you're doing is uh, on a normal transaction. When I send a single UTXO, say if I I send uh, Bitcoin Q and A. 10 Bitcoin, 
uh, well, no, say I <laughs> send Bitcoin Q&A 8 Bitcoin and I use a UTXO, which is 10 Bitcoin. I send him 8 and it returns me 2 Bitcoin change. But if I wanted to spend a whole UTXO, I would select in the UTXO management screen, I would select that 10 Bitcoin UTXO and spend the whole amount. So there would be no change for me to manage. That's getting a little bit technical. And hopefully when we come to the spend tools, we might be able to break that down a little bit more. Awesome. Thank you for that. Okay. So uh, backups it seems to be a theme here where we're talking about backups quite a lot, but they are massively important. Um, so the, the wallet creates two different types of backup. Um, the first one I'll cover off, which we uh, have sort of dubbed the analog backup. Uh, this is kind of the, the dumb backup, if you like. This is the method of writing down uh, your your 12 seed words um, or you can stamp them into metal as well um, and somebody why would you want to do that um, so if you just had your seed words backed up on a piece of paper and your house was to burn down uh, or it was flooded then um, that piece of paper isn't likely to um, even if it was laminated it's probably not likely to uh, withstand uh, you know being attacked by water or definitely not from fire so metal backups kind of um, give that a uh, far more robust uh, feel um, and just you can be sure that, that those words are going to withstand uh, a lot more than uh, just a piece of paper would. Um, some of the downsides of just doing this method, um, in terms of security, it, it's perfect. Um, but obviously these just your seed words will not be able to store the wallet labels or sorry the UTXO labels that brothers just touched on um, so that obviously they're not backed up in this method neither are your pain in connections unfortunately um, and the uh, the dojo connection uh, that's obviously not saved either um, so it's kind of uh, like I say the the sort of dumb backup if you like that's um, designed to be a kind of uh, last resort really um, so that it just withstands the test of time and multiple different attack vectors so on a uh, an everyday sort of usage basis uh, basis uh, you're more likely to be using the digital backups so when you when you first set up your samurai wallet it asks you what location you'd like to save your digital backup and on your digital backup it saves all the metadata within unlike the analog backup um, so you have all your, your Paynim connections and follows saved. You have your Dojo connection to your node saved. All your uh, UTXOs uh, labels are also saved. So for me, this is like a much better way of, of restoring from a backup because all those, all those things you inputted into the wallet, all the labels you made when you received Bitcoin, you're, when you go to restore, you're getting back to where you started from. Unlike the analog backup, where if you were to restore your Bitcoin that way, yes, you can access all your Bitcoin, but sometimes, you know, if you were to get into that situation, you, you, might, you might have a Bitcoin which you didn't know where it came from, if that makes sense. So this digital backup can only be restored at the moment on Samurai Wallet. I don't know if, uh, if there's any, anywhere else that you can decrypt it. And the, in, we call it an encrypted backup because it's encrypted by your passphrase. So that nice strong passphrase you generated or wrote down, inputted into the wallet, which generated your Samurai wallet, your passphrase is what decrypts the digital backup. Um, and you can make multiple copies of this. Um, some people like to put them on USB sticks or uh, take a couple of copies and put them on some micro SD cards. Um, and it's, a, it's a, a far better way in my opinion to restore uh, your samurai wallet rather than using the nuclear option which is to use your 12 words plus passphrase which you've etched into metal stamped into metal and buried in the garden somewhere <laughs> yeah so just from a security perspective um, just to kind of spell it out really if you were to, to put this encrypted backup onto a USB or something like that and then and an attacker was to get their hands on that um, it's they would still need to know your passphrase to be able to do anything with it so um, as long as uh, you know you've got a, a fairly robust passphrase uh, of a you know se semi decent length then um, y you can kind of uh, make multiple copies of this and, and kind of uh, be you know a little bit uh, well you can be saving the knowledge that you're you know, nobody's gonna be able to access it if they grab hold of this USB uh, stick 
Okay, uh, we move on. Okay, pay nims. So these uh, little robots have been gaining massive traction all over Twitter, and I, I love to see it. Uh, so <laughs> pay nim is. Um, the Samurai Wallet implementation of uh, Bit47. Now, Bit47 is uh, just a, a, a Bitcoin improvement, uh, sorry, yeah, Bitcoin improvement proposal um, where that the the wallet will generate from your seed words um, a unique Paynim address. Now, that Paynim address is what you can see here, which is that long string of numbers and letters called PM8, that always starts with PM8. Uh, that string of numbers and letters uh, is enough for anybody else with a Samurai wallet or, or, a, or a wallet that implements this Bit47 uh, to be able to generate addresses uh, known as stealth addresses um, and to be able to send Bitcoin to you. Now, these stealth addresses are called so because uh, the, the, the way that they're generated is using a secret from the person who's paying you uh, it uses a secret from their wallet plus your payment string to generate a unique address. So only the person who is paying you knows that the address generated belongs to your wallet. Um, so pay names are great for repeat payments. So you can what's known as um, follow different pay names. Uh, as you can see there, there's a there's a list of a couple of hundred of them. Um, and once you've followed that pay nim, uh, the wallet will, if you, if you say, right, I want to go and pay uh, Age Forest 4A0, their top of the list, um, the wallet will generate a unique address proper to only that, um, that user um, and allow you to send uh, Bitcoin to them. Um, pay nims also enable uh, Kahoots, which is at a high level is the uh, collaborative spend tools uh, known as Stowaway or Stonewall X2 that come with Samurai Wallet. Again, we'll be covering those in the next session in a much deeper uh, fashion. Um, but the, the pay name is how you would sort of uh, connect to the other user to be able to construct uh, and take part in those different transactions. Um, and I can hear a few people uh, wondering what the hell the robot is for. Uh, so. The robot is essentially a visual version of that PM8 code. Uh, it essentially uses um, a kind of a hashing algorithm to generate the, the image uh, from that code. So, you know, you might see a couple of um, a couple of these uh, pay names that, that look fairly similar, but due to the nature of how they're, they're sort of created from that code, you can be sure that each one is absolutely unique. Um, and they, they also make uh, great Twitter avatars. So uh, the wallet will kind of, when you set it up, as we touched on earlier, the wallet will uh, spit out one of these um, pay names for you. Um, so if you wanted to, say, take donations on Twitter or be able to um, receive uh, payments while you're kind of not around, all you need to do is put a link to your pay name. Uh, there's an example just here, paynim.is slash late star 81c um, and you could just share that on your twitter bio and anybody else with a samurai wallet can send um, an unlimited amount of payments to new addresses um, at, at will basically and i like i like pay as well because you know before before pay if if you wanted to receive bitcoin from your uh, your mate the other side of the world you, you know even though you should be using end-to-end -end encrypted messaging app you know, you would have to paste your Bitcoin address over that messaging app. Um, you know, so if that was compromised and uh, somehow um, that messaging app was harvesting your your, uh, your messages, like we have to trust WhatsApp, WhatsApp's end-to-end -end encrypted uh, messaging service. We have no knowledge that they're actually harnessing our messages. Um, with Paynims, there's no need for that. There's All you have to say is, um, Bitcoin q and I'm going to send you a, a payment, open up your Samurai wallet and start receiving. And, uh, and you know, this just gets communicated over that, what uh, Bitcoin q and mentioned before, over um, Soroban, which is a, a Tor communication network or Tor communication system. So there's, you know, there's no, there's no need to, to share um, Bitcoin addresses anymore, in my opinion.
and then we move on to uh, dust attacks. So first of all, I think it's it's worth mentioning occasionally uh, here and there we, we we get a message in the say Samurai Wallet um, group chat saying someone's just sent me three hundred and twenty sats. Well, where has this come from? What what is it? And we sort of say, well, don't worry. What they all they all somebody has done, maybe an entity um, looking on the blockchain because there is a public blockchain. They've seen one of your addresses that you've previously previously used on the blockchain, and they've sent uh, an, a small amount of Sats to your wallet. Now this becomes a problem because what what that can be used for is if you've not got a smart wallet like Samurai Wallet, when you go to spend in the future, that a uh, small dust amount, let's say 320 sats, could get combined into one of your transactions. And what happens there is that person or entity that sent you that small amount of uh, Bitcoin can then track and see how much, uh, say, Bitcoin is in your wallet or how much you're spending, or they can use that to look into your spending habits. So with Samurai Wallet, uh, when you receive a very small amount of Bitcoin, you get a warning pop up on the screen that says dust transaction detected. And it gives you the option to either ignore it, say perhaps perhaps you've been sent 320 sats and you knew it was coming. But more often than not, um, it's a dust uh, attack. So you would mark that as unspendable. A little bit like what I described earlier with the um, UTXO screen, These this 320 sats would be marked as do not spend. So in the future, you know, you don't need to worry about that dust anymore. Uh, when you go to construct a transaction, that will just be ignored. So there'll be no way in the future for that entity that sent you that really small amount of Bitcoin to snoop on you um, for your future transactions. Is there anything uh, I've missed there, Q? No, I don't think so. Um, I, again, just to spell it out. So, so once you've marked that as do not spend, uh, there's essentially no other user input that needs to happen. Is that right? You just it'll just kind of sit there for a day, and the wallet will essentially just ignore it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So, it will still be in your wallet. I mean, if in my advice is you you don't want to spend it because. Um, you know, otherwise, someone looking on the blockchain can see how you know how you've spent that. And and also, if you do go to spend it, it tends to be that that small amount of Bitcoin is so small that you struggle to to spend it with the on-chain fees. Now, at the moment, that might not be uh, so much of a problem. Uh, people listening back to this will pro probably relish in the fact that we're getting a uh, one sat per byte transactions through. Um, so, yeah, like you say, just mark it as uh, mark unspendable, and then forget about it. Yeah, um, I know we said we weren't doing questions, but it is relevant as a quick one. Somebody's just asked, uh, is the dust re recovered uh, by if you restore by seed words and passphrase? Yes, it absolutely is. Um, it's recovered along with everything else uh, in the wallet. Okay, uh, Sentinel. So Sentinel is um, a, a separate app to Samurai Wallet, uh, but uh, very much um, a complementary one. Um, so Sentinel is the Samurai Wallet implementation of a watch-only wallet. So a watch-only wallet is essentially um, a, uh, a wallet where you can receive uh, Bitcoin into but cannot spend from. Uh, there is absolutely no private keys, uh, which are the, the sort of um, prerequisite to be able to spend Bitcoin. There are no private keys in Sentinel. Um, what you import is something called an extended public key, um, which you can do so by simply scanning a QR code. Um, and that enables you to um, uh, to receive only so you might be sentinels great for the way I use it personally is um, you know I, I can watch all of my different wallets I've got you know I'll have a hardware wallet on there I've got my the different accounts in my samurai wallet on there and I can quickly uh, flick back into between all of them to see if I've received any sats um, or if I've got any remixes on Whirlpool um, you can download Sentinel via the Google Play Store or again as a, as a .apk file which is can be found at SamuraiWallet.com. Um, again, very similar to Samurai Wallet, Sentinel um, operates over Tor and you can absolutely connect to your uh, dojo connection, um, to your own do dojo should I say. Um, and finally, uh, probably a little bit more for the advanced user, but worth noting that Sentinel um, is able to broadcast raw transactions. So if you were to um, 
use uh, Samurai Wallet in an off na offline manner. Uh, Sentinel is one of the apps where you could do the broadcasting from out to the to the to the Bitcoin network without having to bring your Samurai Wallet back online. Uh, and finally, you can sweep private keys into Sentinel. So you might have a um, uh, an open dime is a good example where you can, um, which is like a little USB stick where you can store uh, Bitcoin uh, and transact privately. Uh, you can sweep those directly into Sentinel, into the chosen uh, wallet that you are watching with Sentinel um, to sort of top up that, that wallet if you like. Um, have I missed any of the key things for Sentinel there, brother? I think you've uh, you've pretty much covered it. I was going to say one of the uh, one of the, the things that I use Sentinel for, um, and what I'd recommend others to do is say you're doing a peer to peer trade, and you've got your sort of your your Bitcoin only phone, you know, only only Bitcoin stuff on there. Maybe you've got your Samurai wallet on there, and then you go to do a peer to peer trade in town. You hop on the bus, and um, with you, you take with you your other mobile phone. Well, you could have your Sentinel app with you. So you can only receive and, uh, and you can't spend. So you, at home, you've got your, your, your Samurai wallet app and on your, say, daily driver that you take with you in your pocket, you've got your watch only app so you can keep an eye on your Bitcoin and you can also use it to receive Bitcoin. Good idea. So if uh, if that uh, person you were buying Bitcoin off was to turn out to be an attacker and they uh, give you the old uh, five dollar wrench treatment, if you've only got Sentinel with you, then they ain't getting their hands on your Bitcoin. Uh, yeah, good point that one. Do you want to take this final slide, brother? I'll chime in. Yeah, sure. So uh, we're getting to the uh, the end of the session now. So um, if you're joined us with in the live chat please start uh, putting any questions uh, you may have um so to run you through our top tips um so getting started with your samurai wallet maintain robust backups this this can't be uh, more important you know you you need to write down your 12 words and passphrase that's the theme really of today isn't it i think um you know you want to have both your analog backup and your digital backup um and when you're using the wallet there's, it's really easy to receive Bitcoin. And every time you go to receive Bitcoin, you click on that receive button and then someone sends you Bitcoin. That's it. And as long as you do that, you'll never reuse addresses, which is really important from a privacy preserving spe uh, perspective. Uh, Q, do you want to take, take through the, the boost feature, which we haven't quite covered in today's session? Yeah, so um, very simply, the boost feature is um, the way that the wallet will, if you uh, were to send the transaction um, and the um, sort of the mempool, which is the sort of the queue of all of the uh, all of the Bitcoin transactions that are kind of waiting to be processed. Um, if you were to select the fee when you initially made the spend, that was uh, perhaps too low for the um, for the sort of fee environment. Um, and you didn't want to wait for that to be processed in, you know, an hour, five hours, however long, you know, it, it kind of might take uh, the wallet has a boost button where it will kind of uh, top up the transaction fee for you so that um, you can sort of jump to the front of the queue really to um, kind of uh, get that transaction processed uh, much faster um, next top tip would be to wait for the white loading bar so um, this is an important one that catches out quite a lot of new users where they might get a bit hasty when they open the wallet um, and they might start going to try and create a spend before the wallet is fully um, loaded um, and that might take you know a couple of a couple of seconds or sometimes if there are some um, congestion with the tour network which obviously the wallet defaults to where it sends all of its traffic over uh, then that might take a little bit longer uh, to do that really uh, so before you create any spends or do anything with the wallet, uh, just wait for that white loading bar to stop uh, to stop moving. And my, uh, my 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 number one favorite is the next one because it's the one that I use the most through my daily life and everything. As as of today's today's recording, is turn it off and on again. So with Samurai Wallet. Um, the way to do that is you want to go into your settings on your phone or you long press on the app uh, and you go to the info button and then you force close the app and then you open it back up again. And this is basically 
turning it off and on again. And often that can get rid of, um, you know, little bugs in the system or Tor, Tor networking issues. So that's my favorite. Uh, the next one is to um, heed the wallet warnings. So when spending with Samurai Wallet, as we've sort of discussed with the dust, the dust uh, um, warning as well, Samurai will give you lots of um, on on display warnings for your spending habits. So it's often a good time to sort of slow down. Don't rush through a transaction when you're sending or you're receiving. Um, and just read what's on screen because it gives you some really good tips and, and, and it makes you aware of everything you're doing. So another one which comes to mind is um, when you go to spend all your Bitcoin from your wallet, that can be a bad privacy practice. So often you, you'll get a, a warning on screen that will say, just so you know, you're trying to spend your whole Bitcoin balance. Are you sure you want to do this? Now, this is a way of just sort of saying, you know, this isn't really good for your privacy. Are you sure you want to do it? And if you want to, you just click, yeah. So, uh, you know, just make note of what's on screen and take it slow. Um, and then going on to the, uh, the next point, which is, once you've finished using your Samurai Wallet, um, you want to press the back button to exit. And when you press the back button to exit, it will come up with a warning that says, are you sure you want to leave? Or are you sure you want to quit? And you hit yes. And that serves for two purposes. What that does is after you've been into your Samurai Wallet, you might have made a couple of transactions, followed a couple of paynims perhaps. Um, when you exit the app in the proper fashion, which is press the back button and then hit yes um, to exit, um, that will save all the most recent information onto your encrypted backup. And it will also save all the information onto the app itself. Um, so this is a really, really good uh, you know, practice to, to do. Every time you exit the wallet, just hit that back button. Awesome. Right. And, the, and the, the last two, uh, use the tools. Um, the, there's nothing quite like... Um, getting your hands dirty to to get to grips with something you know um the, the the wallet is completely free you can install it as many times as you want um you can play around create as many wallets as you want uh delete them you can um you can just play around basically um and there's nothing quite like doing that to sort of um proper really sort of get to grips with with all of the features and functionalities with which we've just sort of given a um uh, an overview of um, and the wallet also uh, works uh, in testnet so if you wanted to uh, download the wallet and uh, open it up in testnet mode and grab some uh, testnet bitcoin from a, a faucet which you can get for free online you can play around transacting you know but you might have a spare phone and you can just mess around doing uh, the different spends um, with, with without the fear of kind of losing any any uh, real bitcoin if you like uh, and the last one, ask questions. Um, the, the Samurai Telegram chat uh, room that we're we're sort of broadcasting from now is uh, one of the well, is the most helpful in the space. Uh, I'm a firm believer of that, and <clears throat> there's always people um, knocking around in the room, no matter what time of day it is, to help out. So if you have a question about the wallet, uh, just pop a pop a question into the room, and there's always going to be somebody to help out. Uh, and finally, I'll just do a bit of a shield for the uh, documentation website, uh, docs.samurai.io. Uh, uh, you know, massively extensive um, coverage of all of the different features uh, from the spend tools to the basics that we just covered to Whirlpool to Dojo. Um, so the, the high likelihood is that if you have a question on how to do something in the wallet, it will be covered uh, within the documentation site. Great. And uh, talking questions, uh, we've had a, a few come in. So if I uh, if I uh, sing them off, um, maybe we'll, we'll go through those now. So first of all, Q, does uh, does somebody have to have Samurai Wallet to pay pay me through a payment? Yes, uh, that is a prerequisite. Um, both people, both wallets need to be Samurai users uh, to be able to do that currently. Yes. Perfect. And is there an ability to um, turn off the encrypted backup if you feel like you've uh, you've got a robust uh, method of uh, backing up all your, your C and your passphrase? Uh, I don't know if you can turn it off, uh, but obviously there's nothing stopping you from deleting it off your phone. Um, I will hope that the intern uh, jumps in there if, if I'm speaking out of turn, uh, but I don't think there's an ability to no, turn uh, it off. Just, yeah, you, you can actually uh, disable it uh, in the settings if you would like to disable the encrypted backup. 
awesome. There oh, perfect. Go. I've learned something there as well. And but, uh, but we do recommend keeping it on uh, just because of the the uh, added metadata, for example, uh, like your transaction notes, your your transactions that have been marked do not spend, your dust transactions, all of that uh, metadata is retained in the encrypted backup. Uh, so we recommend keeping it on if, if at all possible. Perfect. Uh, and now we've covered, obviously, Samurai Wallet today uh, with it in a privacy sort of focused fashion. And there's a question here, not related to the Samurai Wallet necessarily, but I think Q, you're a good person to answer this one. Have you got any recommendations for uh, Android phones um, or guides or looking into wanting to de-Google their phone? To, to become a little bit more private in that fashion? Yeah, definitely. So I would recommend um, installing an operating system called Calyx OS, uh, which works on all of the, ironically, on the Google Pixel range of phones. Um, I would advise going for the Pixel 4 uh, or, or, or newer than that, if you, if you know what I mean. Um, the, the th I'm not sure how long they're going to support the 3, 4. Um, so you can uh, install Calyx OS, you know, you go out by the phone, install Calyx OS yourself if you have the know-how to do so. Uh, it's pretty easy and I've got a guide on it on my website uh, at bitcoiner.guide slash Calyx OS. <clears throat> Calyx OS. However, if you didn't want to uh, go through the trouble of doing that, or that sounds like sounds too difficult for you, if you go to mamushi.io, uh, you can buy a... Um, uh, a Google Pixel device uh, pre-installed with Calyx, ready to ready to go out of the box. Wonderful, that's great. I'm also running Calyx, and it's uh, it's fantastic, isn't it? Uh, we've got a next uh, next question here. Uh, someone's asking about when they go to their uh, Paynim area of their wallet. Um, what's the difference between follow and connect? So you're presented when if I was to search for Bitcoin Q and A's Paynim, um, I'm presented with the, the option to first follow, and so I click follow, and then after that I get given the option to connect. What is that? Yeah, that's a really good question actually. Um, so the the initial step to follow somebody uh, that that's the the free bit that doesn't cost you anything. There's no there's no uh, on chain footprint for that. That then enables you to uh, partake in the Cahoots transactions. Um, so they are Stowaway if you wanted to pay another Samurai user or Stonewall X2 which is where you were to spend to a third party with the help of another Samurai user. Um, we'll be doing a deep dive on them next time um, but that's the kind of prerequisite is that sort of fo that follow step um, to be able to do that. Uh, the next step after that would be to connect to someone which is where they're talking about the, the small fee that's involved. Uh, that small fee is um, essentially what's called a notification transaction uh, that um, is kind of uh, embedding some metadata into the blockchain itself so that um, if you were to recover using your analog backup uh, in a couple of years time, uh, you'd be able to sort of recover that, that pain in connection. Um, so why, in the most part, you, you probably wouldn't need to, to do that step um, but it does, if you wanted to um, pay directly to a, another Paynim without using um, a stowaway transaction, so you just wanted to be able to generate stealth addresses um, and just pay them as, as and when you wanted to do that, that is the prerequisite, is that connection transaction. Uh, I believe uh, in a future implementation of um, Bit47, um, that sort of step that involves the small fee is not going to be required, uh, but I don't have any time, um, any uh, timescales as to when that's going to be implemented. Um, but I believe that that is coming. Um, you know, uh, I'll say two week TM. Yeah, perfect. And I think you know, uh, for if you're if you're just an everyday samurai user, normally you only need to follow. So you only need to follow a pain in. Um, if you were to be, say, like a business that was paying your employees, you might consider um, connecting to each of your employees. Uh, and that way you can send them Bitcoin offline when they're offline. Um, but just by following, following alone, that, that allows you to use the privacy preserving spend tools as long as you're, um, the person you're spending to is also online. Uh, the next question here, and I think it's gonna uh, the answer is gonna be my favorite, is my wallet is showing a balance of zero sats. Any tips of of how to get it um, showing my, my real Bitcoin balance? <laughs> um, so this is a little bit more of a, of a kind of nuanced answer, I guess, because it it kind of depends whether they're running their own dojo. 
um, because if they're, they're they're running their own dojo um, and that might not be functioning correctly, that can be one of the the key ways that um, that you might see a zero balance in your wallet. Um, another th- another cause of it sometimes can be issues with Tor connections. So we touched on earlier about um, uh, force closing the wallet, switch it off and go back in again. Nine times out of ten, that's probably going to fix your issue. Uh, otherwise, it's likely to be a, a dojo issue. Um, at which point, I start to look to see if your your node is running um, is is running uh, as it should be. I guess. Yeah, and uh, if in doubt, hop on the chat and ask some questions. There'll there'll be um, you know people to help you out and talk you through how to to troubleshoot. So you know my my first favorite one is turn it off and on again. If that doesn't if that doesn't work, then ask some questions. Um, we've got a couple of questions here, uh, Samurai Wallet. If you you like to answer these, I think you'd be best poised. Uh, the first one being, um, is there going to be an ability in the future to use PSBTs uh, with Samurai? Um, the short answer is yes. Uh, the more nuanced answer is that you'd most likely want to be creating your PSBTs from a watch-only wallet like Sentinel, uh, since since you're more likely to uh, have that uh, on the go. You may not want to have your, your Samurai wallet your private key information with you, as you as you mentioned, brother uh, Rabbit. So the the most likely workflow will be creating the PSBT in a third party app like Sentinel, uh, and then broadcasting or, or then signing the PSBT with the, your Samurai wallet, um, and then broadcasting it either with your Samurai wallet if it's online or um, with Sentinel if it's offline. So the, that's the longer answer, but the short answer is yes. Perfect. Uh, and then the final question, I think, for you is that um, it's it's often uh, raved about that Samurai used to have something called stealth mode, which is where you could hide the app on your phone and you'd key in uh, a, a number into your keypad, uh, onto your telephone keypad, and uh, it would uh, make your Samurai wallet pop up. Is there um, any way in the future this, this feature could make its way back? Uh, yeah, so that was one of our... Uh, most loved features. It was uh, available in the wallet right from the the first version we released in 2015, uh, and it was labeled Stealth Mode. Um, I believe it was from Android 7, but maybe it was 6. Uh, Google made some changes. Um, first, it was a policy change on the Google Play Store, saying that you're not able to, you're not allowed to make use of the permissions that are required uh, in order to make that um, that work on your device. Uh, so to get around the Play Store policy restrictions, we released um, what we termed uh, Google Band APK, uh, and you could you could sideload that and get around this restriction and still make use of the feature. But uh, you know, as Google is apt to do, they turned the policy decision, uh, the Google Play Store, and actually uh, made changes at the Android level in future versions of Android. Uh, to make it just completely impossible, even if you have the the side loaded version of the APK, so it's not possible on on in the same way on the default versions of of Android for, that Google provides um, on a third party Calyx or uh, Graphene or um, any of the other uh, lineage, etc. It, it, it is possible, but it still requires some work. So we're looking at. Um, easier to implement alternatives to the spirit of stealth mode. And um, we, there was also SMS based remote commands that we had to get rid of as well. So we'd love to implement something like these these features again, or at least features that um, serve the same purpose, though they may be different in implementation. Awesome. Thank you very much for that Samurai. I think our typical brothers just, just dropped off again. Um, so I'll probably just wrap it up. We'll give a, a, a little bit of a uh, overview of what's coming uh, down the pipe in the next three sessions. Uh, so the next session, which is going to be, um, uh, I think, on Wednesday this week coming, uh, we'll, we'll release the times, uh, definitive times and dates uh, shortly after the call. Um, we'll be talking about the spending tools. So Stonewall, Stonewall X2, Stowaway and Ricochet will be giving you a deep dive into what they all are, what they do. <clears throat> what they do um, and why you might want to use them in, in different uh, scenarios. Uh, the session after that, the third one, 
uh, would be uh, Whirlpool. Uh, so we'll take you through um, the different implementations and how you can mix on mobile, how you can leverage the desktop graphical user interface, uh, and finally, what the command line is and how you can use that. And in our final week, uh, we'll be talking about Dojo, uh, the Samurai Wallet backend server, uh, the different implementations of that, um, and the sort of different uh, methods that you can get your hands on one, be it via DIY, uh, plug and play, or just going through the, the sort of default uh, uh, quote unquote vanilla uh, Dojo. Um, so looking forward to those sessions. We'll be um, releasing the dates, as I say, uh, shortly after this call, once we finalize them. Um, and brother, is there anything else you wanted to touch on just before we sign off? I'm hoping you're back in the room. Uh, no, no, that's great. Thank you very much all for joining. And uh, I guess we'll see you poolside. Yeah.